Welcome to the Welsh Woodman Workshop and in tonight's video I'm going to be wood turning a giant cotton bobbin for a friend of mine, it's his anniversary coming up soon, he wanted to get his wife something personalised and special this year so I've never turned one of these so it's going to be interesting to see how it turns out so I really hope you enjoy so I've got a nice bit of beach on the lathe, it's a little bit unbalanced so we're going to have to true that up with a bowl gouge first of all so as soon as we get into the true we can start establishing this thread bobbing shape now I've gone for beaches, it's a nice tight close grain wood and traditionally beech and hornbeam tend to be used for these little thread bobbins so I'll try and keep it nice and traditional. Right, let's go and crew this up then. So we're going to turn this on, standing out of the line of fire gradually bring up the speed seems about right there. My tool handle as usual is down at an angle close to my body, make sure I'm touching the tool rest first I've got a face plate holding this on so it's nice and secure if I had a tailstock, I'd be having it up to support the piece. I'm taking nice light cuts because I have got the tailstock. So I'm going to try and attempt to true this up in little sections. You'll probably notice the flute of the gouge is pretty open. So we've got a lot of air log we're cutting. We do want the wing to catch on the, uh, on the piece to come around. So you see I'm taking tiny bits away at one time. I'm trying to work more on the unbalanced end before I move towards towards the uh, the headstock. Tool's nice and close to my body so it's supported at an angle as well and as soon as I remove the bulk of this material and I get it into the true I'm going to just do some sort of planing cuts across with my bowl gouge to get it nice and flat. The way you can test this flat is by putting a rule along the top and if you see any light it's not flat. You need to face off the uh, the back side of this then and that's going to help us have a nice flat end we can work from. I found an end grain it works better if you work in from out. So I've just changed over the tool because my tool is getting blunt rather than going to the grinder. I'm gradually removing that material until I have a flat end. And I'm actually sighting down the, the workpiece so I can see as soon as it gets into the true I'm not getting any ghosting so any ear log showing as I'm sighting down the piece. Okay, so I'm going to do some measurements on, so on the top of the bobbin, bottom of the bobbin, and the slim part in the middle. So I'm going to go 50 millimetres down, make a nice little mark, 150 for the middle section, and another 50. So these are going to be two rounded ends and a slimmer section. And I'm just going to want to mark those on, so I can see it as this piece is turning. And I've left a little bit at the bottom so we can part this off or maybe make a jam chuck if needed. I'm going to have to figure out what the middle sort of size is. So these are about the same at the moment. So how far I want to go in. So the middle section then I want to be 80. Turn these guys on. So I've got my outside caliper set to 80. So I'm going to be using something called a parting tool to do this. So on the outside of that line, I'm going to do a slight cut coming across, do a release cut and we're going to step it forward and backwards. I'm going to raise my tool rest a tiny bit to allow the parting tool to be trailing a little bit more, which helps the cut a little bit better. So this is very seasoned, I've had this beach gone about five years now, so it's completely dried out. Yeah, all right. Cool, so we're going to do the same the other side of this line. So in between these two parted lines we want to get this back to an even distance so it's going to hog away material. Now because this is all true and in the round I can actually use a rough and go to do this because essentially this is a, a spindle piece. Never use a rough and gouge on a bowl.
So I'm working in from out so I don't tear off the fibres. So we're getting these long, thin, stringy shaving from that. And this is uh, bone dry this stuff, very hard stuff, Beach. Okay, so I'm overhanging the tool rest quite a bit now. So I'm going to move over to using a bull gouge. And I've got a 40 40 grind on this. So here's the finish we're getting straight off the tool. So I haven't touched this, this with sandpaper yet. So it's quite a smooth finish. One or two tiny little scratches in there I can get out with a bit of sandpaper. But this is the uh, the profile then of the bobbin. I'm going to try and turn this in now so it blends in nicely. Then we can work on doing the, the hole through. And again, I'm going to be using a 40 40 grind bull gouge just to get this shape rather than the spindle gouge. Very versatile tool this. So I'm just chamfering the corner, so taking off the, the corner edge. That'll allow me to roll a bead easier. So it's a giant bead, that's all I'm rolling essentially. I'm just doing this in small sections again because of the length of this piece. I want to roll a nice smooth sweeping curve into the center. Now as this is the first one I've made, this, this is all in my head. If I was to do like a batch production of these, I create a storyboard with all the key dimensions on make a scratch board so I can mark those key dimensions onto my piece and some templates as well to make sure I'm getting the accurate sizes each time. I'm just doing exactly the same on the other one, so creating the chamfer, rolling a, a bead into the centre and you'll notice that what I'm doing with my hands and my fingers, I'm putting my fingers up to stop the shavings from coming into my face and roll it nice and smoothly into the, the piece itself. So as soon as I'm happy with the shape and it looks fairly symmetrical either side, I can then move it on to doing the next stage. Sand through the grits, keeping the sandpaper moving. If I keep it still too long, you're going to put scratches in. Look at that dog, look all the, all the places in the workshop to sit, she sits underneath my feet. Come on then, oh, come here, come here. What do you think? Is that ready? So we're going to be using a product called Yorkshire Grit, so it's like an abrasive paste. It will just help bring this up to a, a nicer sort of sanded finish. Uh, quick, quicker and we're going to apply a wax over the top of this so put a liberal amount on and we're going to turn the lathe on and use the friction to buff this in okay, remove my tool post to make this a little bit easier to buff up and I'm going to come from underneath turn the lathe on speed the lathe up a little bit there we go, it's a nice smooth finish on that now. And what we can do over the top of this is apply a hard wax. So the top of Hamp Hampshire Sheen's The Product uh, by Martin Savian Smith. You might have seen him already on YouTube, he's got some really good stuff. All right, we're going to rub this on. And we're going to use a really thin coat of this to tend to use. And I'm going to use the friction then of the lathe as it's on to help buff this guy up. I want to do a slight undercut now, and we're going to get ready to drill in a hole and what that undercut will do is allow this to sit flat on the table So I'm going to want this hole to go through the entire piece 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lathe on at a very slow speed. I'm going to feed in an auger bit. And I'm going to hold this upside down. I've found that if I hold it upside down, I put it close to my body. It seems to feed in quite nicely. I've drilled most of the way through. So, so in and out, in and out, so the shavings go through. And we're going to do that until we get down right to the bottom. I got my foot on the stop button just in case this does at any point catch. My gauge, according to my gauge, I've gone through. We're going to make sure we've got enough of a grip here, so we're going to blend this in. We've got enough of a grip here that we can lock our jaws out so we can finish and clean off the, the top side of that. And I can do that with some pin jaws. I'm just going to neaten up the, uh, the side. So just added another coat of Yorkshire grit onto the bottom and it's giving it this sort of waxy rubbery feel. Uh, adding a bit of Hampshire sheen over the top. Guess it's to do with the oils in the Yorkshire grit. Hampshire sheen, this is quite a thick wax. Don't normally use this, tend to use chestnut or fiddies. Uh, but I thought I'd give it a go on, the, on this project. And I do want to put my fingers deep inside it. That's a recipe for disaster. So what I tend to do is use this little jig I've made wrap the paper towel around the jig, opposite way to where the lathe's turning and you can just whack that in there then and it does the same buffing job <laughs> same, same buffing job as your hands would right we're just about ready to part off the other side and I've left a little hole in there that I should be able to expand my pin jaws into so if I need to do like a finishing cut on the other side I can, I've got that option to sand and finish so do the parting off now here. So in order to finish the other side as good as this, I'm going to remount it onto my pin jaws. Place, expand the jaws into the little mortise essentially we've created with that long hole. I'm going to check the fit of this. So I'm pulling that with all my weight, that's good. It's not going anywhere. Uh, we're just going to clean up this bottom edge. Using a bowl gouge again, I want to make sure my bowl gouge is cut along the centre line. So we're going to adjust my tool rest to allow me to do that. Again, because we're cutting across the end grain of the wood, it's kind of hard on the tool. Now we can start creating this hole a bit more properly. Right, Connie, I'm trying to sweep my lovely. Ah. Uh -oh. You're helping me. Nope, you've been taking it off me. Come on, give it back, drop. Drop. <laughs> no! no. <laughs> silly dog, you silly dog. So I've created some little paper templates just using a pyrography iron to, to put on the, their names and the date of their anniversary for this year. So here's the completed piece, quite an unusual one, never made anything quite like this before and the challenge was to get the whole board through the middle and mounted it between centres without a tailstock. So I really enjoyed making this and I've used the pyrography iron to get the Aaron and Amber and the anniversary date on there as well. If you are watching Aaron and Amber, I hope you have a fantastic anniversary. You make a lovely couple together. If you haven't done so already as well, remember to hit the subscribe button down below to subscribe to the Welsh Woodman Workshop channel and I can get more videos like this your way. Be interested to hear your views in the comments of this piece and also if you like tonight's video, give me a good thumbs up as well. So I hope to see you on future videos. Hope you have a great night. Diolch yn fawr, no stop.